Our second lesson comes from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 10 through 15. Listen for the word of God. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your sharing with them and all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, dear Lord. Can you believe the holiday season is here? And we will soon be sitting at tables downstairs, feasting together around a Thanksgiving meal. We pause once again during the season to give thanks for the harvest. It's fruits that have been collected after a great summer and fall. I give thanks for my first crop of Brussels sprouts that I harvested last week after the first snow, because Debbie Rorick told me that Brussels sprouts are Thanksgiving vegetables. Now they have lost their bitterness and are sweet. Mind you, I only produced three plants, but tended them faithfully all summer and fall, but just want to give thanks to God for them. We give thanks today for being present here, and we can reflect during this time about how far we have come this year. As the days shorten, and as the season of fall gives way to fast approaching winter, the holy days begin next week. As Advent comes, preparation, plans, anticipation of the coming of Christ, Christmas tide. This is the season of lights, festivals, gifts, events that provide opportunities for us to gather together. Blessings abound. They seem to just multiply in our lives during this season. So on this day, Christ the King Sunday, we celebrate the reign of Christ and we remember the glory and the power and all that we proclaimed about him from the last liturgical year has come to fullness in this day. But Lord, we just wanna pause and give you thanks. Giving thanks, thanksgiving. Eucharistio is the Greek word that Paul uses in the scripture today. Also in Psalm 100, we have the sanctuary images described of God's people making joyful noise and processing together into the temple of God. Now, as I was doing this word study, not from my usual kiddo theological New Testament book, I decided to research for a change online and found an amazing story that accompanied the word study. It was written by a young woman named Montserrat, who is a farmer's wife and mother of nine children. In her study of the Greek word eucharistio, thanksgiving, she shares that she's been on a personal journey this year that has begun to change her to the world of giving thanks. She exclaims that Eucharistio has power when we fully live it. This word also contains the Greek words charis, which means grace, 
and derived from that is chara, which means joy. So thanksgiving, grace, joy, they all come together and she asks, could it be that the quest to find joy, true joy, is in the simply giving thanks for God's grace? Giving thanks, expressing gratitude, is not just a commandment from God, thou shalt thank the Lord for all things. It is a commandment with a promise. You who receive all things with thanksgiving shall be made glorious, and the things of this earth shall be added unto you, even a hundredfold. With a promise from God like that, then why is it so hard for us to give thanks and show gratitude? Each time we receive a gift, a blessing, an increase in our dividends, our stocks, a new car, a new job with higher pay, a new home, a new lease on life, an excellent health report, these are blessings that we receive and do we really pause and say, thank you, God, or show gratitude for the person who gave us a special gift? Montserrat shares that gratitude, believe it or not, takes hard work and effort. We not only have to feel it, we have to express it. For everything in our lives, she mentions, that mentor Sister Bonnie told her, that mercies and blessings come in different forms, and sometimes they come as hard things. Now maybe the mercies and blessings were difficult tasks completed, like life lessons you had to struggle through to learn, but in the end you come out of the experience feeling joyful. Yet the Lord says, you shall thank the Lord God in all things. All things means just that. Good things, difficult things, not just some things. For God has commanded us to be grateful because God knows being grateful will make us happy. So always be grateful in all that comes your way in life. Let's not fail to acknowledge the blessings that are abundant in our everyday lives. For if ingratitude is numbered among serious sins, then gratitude takes its place among the noblest of virtues. Montserrat shows and shares that a friend named Monson said that gratitude is definitely a virtue that is becoming lost in our world of give me this, give me that, or I deserve this or that. And he says that both abundance and the lack of exist simultaneously in our lives as parallel realities. When we choose not to focus on what is missing from our lives, but are grateful for the abundance that is present, love, health, family, friends, work, joys in nature, personal pursuits that bring us happiness, the wasteland of illusions then falls away and we experience heaven on earth. We will always lack something. And if we choose to focus on what we do not have, then we make ourselves miserable. Now, one of my friends told me that she decided to keep a gratitude journal that lists and numbers the daily gifts she receives from God. And this activity is transforming her life. And Montserrat also shared that she decided to keep a gratitude journal. And she says that it has changed her life. And she expressed that she is living a Eucharistio life a life of thanksgiving. She says, when you list your blessings, you're going to always give thanks and count your blessings, and that helps you see yourself and those around you as God sees you. She says, my eyes are now drawn outward 
and upward to God. As you look upward, you will be able then, as you look outward, to see others. And you learn that in giving thanks, you want to give to others. It is then a natural God-intended movement. You learn that this is a natural thing that happens. And then 2 Corinthians text speaks to this God-intended movement of receiving much and then giving much to others. Now, Paul wants us to be clear about who is the supplier of our blessings. And God is able to provide us with every blessing and abundance so that by having enough of everything, we can share abundantly in every good work. We will be so enriched in every way for our greatest generosity will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of this ministry of righteousness and justice. Paul wants to make it clear to us that God is the giver of all things, not we ourselves. All that we possess originated from God as blessing, not for anything that we have done or created. This is a life-changing insight for many to accept. And because of this generosity God has given us, the foundation that is laid for us is to reach out and give to others. And as a result of our serving, we will be enriched in every way for our great generosity. We here at Covenant have a great legacy. We have responded to the ministry of righteousness and justice over the past hundred years. We are blessed in our sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who want to hear. We just want to thank you, God, for the generous blessings we have received and strive to share abundantly in every good work. I just want to thank you, Lord. And now I want to thank you, Covenant, for the 22 years of ministry I've shared in this place. I just want to give thanks to God for the call that was extended to me to come and be one of your shepherds, one of your pastors, one of your partners in ministry. So where has the time gone it has been such an amazing faith empowering journey in our traveling together as we've walked day by day towards the reign of God, living as God's kingdom people, seeing glimpses of the kingdom life, especially when we worship together in the beauty of this amazing, glorious sanctuary. We have been here to experience God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit's presence that is always in our midst, doing especially our sacramental moments together. When I was called to help revive our youth program, it was your generosity and support and prayers of thanksgiving that helped this ministry grow and flourish and we've seen a generation grow up in our midst. We've rocked them as babies. We've baptized them. We took them out into the world and exposed them to the ways of doing righteousness and justice, watching them become peacemakers. And we continue now with the next generation to nurture them and their faith and continue to bless them and pray for them. And you, Covenant, have been my family. God made sure that I found such a loving, caring, compassionate community of brothers and sisters to live with. We've shared meals in your homes. I've even stayed overnight in several of your homes with confirmation sleep-ins. We've hugged and cried together when confronted with life struggles and losses. We have retreated together, danced together, rejoiced and celebrated life together. 
And we've gathered here weekly in this God-filled sanctuary to worship and praise God and giving thanks to God. I just want to thank you, Covenant. And I encourage you now to always give thanks to God every moment of each day when you can so that the ministry here will continue to do great works in this circle, in this city, and in the world. Please let your influence continue to touch, expose, and bring God's people to faith. Please, I appeal to you to continue to keep watch over our children, our youth, and our young adults, and over yourselves and your families. Please keep your passion for justice and people issues flaming bright so that the community around can see your lights. And remember this is the church of Jesus Christ, who is the head. And you are called to follow the Holy Spirit's bidding and direction. This is a new day a new leadership that God has called has come to shepherd you and know that God has plans for this place. And remember these words I leave you from one of my favorite scriptures from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen.